it's designed for everybody in mind so that it, there's a diversity of, uh, of instructional strategies in play and assessment strategies so that you have, so choice and options are built right in and so that they can either be, you know, reading in text or watching a video or they can be listening to something and it's not necessarily um, just one element, but it's a, it's a diversity. Where possible, we try and break out of the, the standard essay format and we ask for them to consider different ways that they could get at that information to, to share it back and could they be flexible in the assessment and sometimes they'll say well how do you how do you grade something that's you know a podcast or a video and so we look at, at different ways that that's possible they should be able to come into a classroom and i think it's their right as a human to be um to be taught in a way that um, they can understand and for them to to not have to say there's something weird or different Universal course design is actually really important uh, I've, because I think that online courses, they're the great equalizer. Um, anybody can be studying online and you don't know who anybody else is. You don't really have that preconceived notion of somebody else having a disability because everybody has equal footing. Uh, one of my favorite anecdotes about having universal design, the benefits of having that is uh, from my own experience actually as a student uh, a couple years ago, I was working, I had a group project that I did for an entire semester and we were working together and for our final presentation that we had to do, I had to put together online, I suggested well, why don't we just have a Skype meeting and everybody get together. There was, I think there was four people in our group and one person said no, I don't think I can do that. And we were like, oh okay, I'm sorry, why not? And I was like, well I'm deaf actually so I, I can't actually, I don't actually like the sound of my voice and it's really hard for me to do. And we were all like, oh. We didn't understand. We were shocked because we had been working together fully online, asynchronously, emailing, and I never had the slightest notion that there was something different about her. So I, that that was wow. That was just like an epiphany for me because I realized like wow, you can really, really, every, anybody can benefit from doing this. So if you implement universal course design into into something, that means that. Everybody has a chance. There's no nobody's going to be held behind because they maybe can't hear in class, that they can't see the notes, so they they need something, they need extra time because every everybody's accounted for, so that you everybody's basically the same. They're on the same footing. So. When I'm thinking about my the online components of my course, I try to um, think about okay, well, what are the possible barriers that particular students may have to accessing the material? Um, am I delivering material? only in written form and will that be a problem for students who you know have difficulty with that form uh, am I using only video and so it, it, will that be difficult for students who you know have difficulty um, hearing for instance or you know they don't uh, respond well to a particular type of presentation and once I identify uh, the particular medium I'm using I try and ensure that we have um, also available a backup for that so that if is there a transcript available for a video is there um, an alternative way that a student can access um, uh, um, something that is uh, delivered only in writing for instance and you know that's kind of part of it but then the other part also is okay do I have to rely on writing only or can I present it in multiple uh, through multiple media. There are strictly technical reasons why uh, universal um, instructional designs should be considered when designing online courses. And this has to do with uh, enabling uh, um, uh, the use of, of technology, such as screen readers or text-to-speech programs. Uh, there are various guidelines uh, um, on the web on how to do this, including the, the official uh, 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 WC3 guidelines for accessibility of online information. Generally, universal instructional design models um, for online learning are not uh, that different um, than, let's say, for other types of learning, including traditional lectures. Um, I actually prefer to, again, thinking back to a more learner-centered approach to instructional design, I like to refer to accessible learning as a, as a way to approach the design of, of online courses. And uh, through this process, um, the, uh, uh, the instruct instructor really starts with asking the question why 
accessibility is important when it comes to when it comes to learning and what the issues are uh, in terms of diversity of, of, of students or um, uh, fam or gaining familiarity with with uh, disability or cultural or, or, or uh, ethnic issues um, and then uh, one of the critical uh, uh, steps in the process is to examine one's pedagogical values um, we know that no matter how many guidelines, uh, uh, no matter how, how, how much we train uh, faculty in designing courses, um, they really need to first see uh, true value in doing what we are asking them to, to do. So I think uh, 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 just going through that process of, of, of uh, gaining insight into one's pedagogical uh, orientation, values, beliefs, and so on is, is, uh, uh, has, has great value in terms of, of, of um, teaching and, and course design. And lastly, uh, there will always be students who require um, accommodations in courses. And uh, uh, approaching course design and, and teaching in a flexible way, um, providing options, uh, is, is a proactive uh, uh, way to ensure that accommodations will be easily implemented uh, once the need arises later in the, in the course. So one of the main benefits that learning outcomes play in the course design process, I think, relate to a current and important emphasis that we're placing on universal design in the curriculum. So that's a design that focuses explicitly on ensuring that educational environments are designed to meet the needs and abilities of all learners within the classroom. And I think I come to this from a very personal standpoint that I have a daughter who has a reading disability and am becoming increasingly aware of how accommodations and supports can be provided in educational environments to ensure that all learners are provided with an opportunity to succeed. And I think that even when we talk, uh, Ronald Mace talked about, uh, who was really the, the founder of universal design within, um, within architecture, um, he talked about the notion of that, that all learners being a bit threatening, that um, we will likely never achieve uh, an environment in which we meet the needs of every single learner, but at least we can focus on meeting the needs as, uh, of as many learners as possible. And I think if I were to advocate for one change in universal design processes, it would be to ensure that clearly, concisely articulated learning outcomes are provided throughout the course design process. And this is really critical for students who have um, for students who have learning disabilities, who might have um, psychiatric challenges, who might, uh, who might have ADHD, that really what it provides uh, an opportunity for students to really focus and structure their own learning and take responsibility for their own learning 